Mountain adventures often begin at that point where the road all but disappears. That's the way it is in Caribou Chilcotin of central BC. We've come looking for the chance to climb and ski a mountain so remote that the world has only known about it for half a century. Named for the Canadian statesman who first proposed the transcontinental railway, Mount Waddington is crowned by two summits, offering two goals, skiing the northwest summit and climbing the southeast tower. It's going to be a lot more challenging than it looks on the map. Driving north out of Vancouver, the mountains force us inland, away from British Columbia's coast range. Nothing in this part of the world is all that distant as the crow flies, but even for birds to get anywhere, they'd have to fly over some pretty lofty barriers. We ground dwellers are forced to make our way on roads and trails that twist along valley floors. Ten hours of route finding takes us through the cowboy mecca of Williams Lake and onto a remote oasis where we can stage and prepare for our journey to the mountain. We're at Bluff Lake in the Caribou Chilcotin Valley uh, and I'm looking south down towards Waddington but you really can't see anything at the moment. It's been socked in for the past three days, pretty much raining off and on and getting chillier as we speak. I love being in the mountains. Uh, I work as a guide uh, for that very reason. I love sharing time in the mountains with, pe with the people. And uh, this is a great trip because we have a good variety. We have professional rock climbers. We have Mark Sinat, it's an amazing rock climber. We have Rick Armstrong, Kasha Rigby, uh, Hillary Nelson. Uh, these guys are all really fantastic athletes and people that I like spending time with. So whatever else happens, as long as we're safe and we have a good time, that's really my main focus for being here. So far, so good. The North Face athlete team travels the world, climbing and skiing the highest points on the map. Spencer Wheatley is the world extreme skiing champion, a crown he won in the mountains around Valdez, Alaska. We'll rely heavily on his experience in that coastal range and on the skills he's honed during seasons as a mountain guide. Unprecedented ascents on Pakistan's Great Trango Tower and the soaring sea cliffs of Baffin Island make Mark Sinnott one of the world's most respected alpinists. His skill will be invaluable in our attempt to place climbers atop the more fearsome of Waddington's two summits, the Southeast Tower. Having traveled the mountain ranges of the world, Hilary Nelson has come into her own as a seasoned mountaineer and skier of international renown. The book on Hilary always reads the same. She's the strongest woman any of us have ever seen. Kasha Rigby has turned the ski world on its ear with her ability to drive Telemark skis down slopes that most alpine skiers won't dare. Her sunny disposition and shining smile belie the fire that drives her to the tops of unclimbed mountains and down the throats of unskied couloirs. Rick Armstrong is perhaps the world's most versatile adventurer being equally adept on skis, snowboard, or paraglider. He spends a part of each year in Antarctica exploring those mountains and valleys where no skiers have ever been. But before the skiing and climbing comes the organizing and repacking. This is Bluff Lake and the White Saddle Ranch belonging to the King family. About as close as civilization comes to Waddington, this is the sort of place early explorers would have used as a jumping off point. We owe a debt of gratitude to those who came here first, those who blazed the trail, those who found this mountain. Discoverer of Mount Waddington and the first woman to climb the Northwest Summit, Mrs. Phyllis Munday. It's an experience that one never, never forgets. And a, an experience that you treasure. Um, I can't say you treasure the hardships of it, but the, the joy and the, of getting there and something that you really want to do in the mountains, and we did it. It's worth whatever effort you put into it. Doesn't matter how hard it is. I'd go back again, no. Don and Phyllis Mundy tried for 11 summers to summit in Waddington, and they had a lot further to go. They weren't using a jet ranger to get to 11,000 feet. 
But uh, 11 summers, that pretty much shows you what the wind is like on a place like Waddington. It's right off the coast. Storms are always going to be backing up against the coast range. This is the dry side. We're on the uh, northeastern side of the coast range right now, and it's been pretty much raining on and off for three days. Expedition travel rarely goes uninterrupted. Perhaps the most valuable trait any expedition member can possess is patience. Helicopters can't fly in low cloud conditions, there being no instruments by which to judge glacier landings. We're forced to entertain ourselves until the weather clears over the distant mountains. Pilots have a really difficult time with flat light. It's something that they struggle with all the time, and they don't really have instrumentation that allows them to fly uh, without sight. They don't usually fly at night. They don't usually fly when they can't see. So unless they have clear weather, it's really difficult to make a safe landing. Going up in the heli may be out of the question, but White Saddle is home to more than one sort of aircraft. While it can't land up on the glacier, Dave King's Cessna is well suited to a scouting mission. At least we'll finally get a chance to see the mountain. We want to see the peak, but seeing it may actually be more intimidating than rewarding. With every glance, with every tip of the wings, we consider the struggle that is to come.